My friend here has an itchy stinger finger. <laughs> He fans. You're a fool. Hey man, I just started. Man, that's a new insult record. <laughs> yeah, yeah, laugh it up, bee brain. <laughs> Can I continue? <laughs> okay, okay, get it out. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, welcome to the next installment of the History of Masters of the Universe. This one comes to you courtesy of the Patreon tribe, who voted on this to be the next toy history lesson in the latest <laughs> Patreon poll! <laughs> Masters of the Universe exploded on the scene in 1982, and 83 was a stellar follow-up year with even more memorable characters. Well, I'd say you're off to a good start. Can you believe Masters of the Universe celebrated its third awesome year in a row in 1984? Well, it's true. Would you like to hear the story? A dozen new single-carded figures were released. Six villains, four new vehicles, a gigantic new playset, the first and only replacement weapons pack, some re-releases of old favorites, and the first and only Malins ever offered in the line. Hey, don't forget us! Sorry, Orko. And six new heroes. <laughs> How could anyone forget you, Orko? He-Man and Skeletor would receive several new versions throughout the ages, but the variations all began in 1984 with Battle Armor He-Man and Battle Armor Skeletor. To help protect us. Fixing dings and dents on your original He-Man and Skeletor figures? It won't be easy. But now you could smash <laughs> and bash your figures and repair the damage with one simple spin. That is the best idea I've heard all day. With so many figures having extra gimmicks in addition to the standard waist spring, He-Man and Skeletor needed something to keep up with everyone else. And the battle armor feature allowed them to take a pounding and stay astounding. I'm so powerful I even impress myself! The heroes of Eternia receive five new guardians. Well, four, if you know He-Man's little secret. I am Adam, Prince of Eternia and defender of the secrets of Castle Grayskull. We only had to wait a year after seeing Prince Adam for the first time on the Filmation animated series to be able to have a figure of him hold his magic sword aloft and say, By the power of Grayskull! him with powers that can only be described as fabulous. This Adam figure was even more poorly disguised than he was in the show. He just straight up had He-Man's head and exact same skin tone. At least in the show, Adam smiled a lot more and had a much lighter skin tone. But it's pretty hard to make a demure figure using the standard Masters of the Universe body, I guess. <laughs> the filmation inspired figures didn't stop with Adam. That's Orko. You could say Orko was our first Filmation-style figure, who looked like he jumped off the screen of Lou Scheimer's beloved classic series, rather than having the intense and powerful look of all the other figures. Since they wanted to stay accurate to Orko's size on the show and make him pint-sized, they even things out with a play feature, a ripcord, which we'll see again in a bit, and, of course, a magic trick. Orko, no magic, please! Why not? Orko's magical tricks don't always go the way he planned. Ah, come on. Orko said he had a new magic trick to show us. I can hardly wait. Yeah, show us some magic, Orko. Now show us your new transporting trick! Yeah! I don't have the original coins the figure came with, but can you make these Canadian coins disappear? Hmm, I'll try. Now maybe this time it'll work. Wait, what? I wouldn't do that if I were you. Well, if Orko's going to do a trick, somebody's got to warn the king. Okay, it's magic time. You people are bots! Come on, what's the worst that can happen? Miggle, maggle, muggle, mice, mystic globes now arise! <laughs> Orko! 
You turned the king into a wild boar! I think I read it wrong. <laughs> or go! Why are you covered in eggs? Magic is tricky stuff. <laughs> hey, tricky stuff. It's pretty funny, huh? Change him back, Orko. I I'm trying. I'm trying. Through the power of stone by the mystical glass, let the magic within now into me pass. <laughs> oh, no! Hmm. Must have used too much heat and not enough oomph. You're a real pain in the neck. You got that right. And it's all my fault. Well, yeah. Fix it. Upside, downside, in between. Magic wand, make the room clean. It's working. It's working. Good. Everything's back to normal. Yeah, thanks to my magic. What? <laughs> now for my next trick. Oh, no. The only trick we want to see is you disappearing. See you later. <laughs> Mechanic also joined the Masters. Mechanic, can you spot our friends? Leave it to me, E Man. With his extending bionic neck. I've got a little trick up my neck. Perfect for keeping a watchful eye on invading baddies. His neck was in bad shape, but I managed to give him a bionic neck. A bionic neck? I've heard of bionic legs, bionic arms. Not today, friend. Bionic eyes. Even bionic elbows, baby. But a bionic neck is a first. A face full of sleep gas will put you out. Well, then I'll just have to move my face. Stratos got some air support from... Buzz off! Am I glad to see you. Who will always be bee guy to me. How can that be? A real honey of a figure. Did I hear someone say honey? Then there was Fisto. Oh, that's me, all right. Who punched his way onto toy pegs, proving the old saying by Mike Tyson to be true. Everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face. So you want to play, do ya? If you get punched in the face by Fisto, you should probably plan on getting used to the new planet you're being transported to. While most of the heroes and villains didn't seem to be counterparts of each other, other than He-Man and Skeletor, in 84, Fisto met his match with Jitsu, the evil master of martial arts and bad posture. Everybody's got a plan until they get chopped in the face. Right, Nate? There's another chop! Woo! Woo! And the rest of Skeletor's Yes Men in 84 were downright beastly. Yes, Skeletor! Two years before the Snake Men slithered their way into Eternia, the name is Cobra Khan, joined the evil forces of Skeletor and put a damper on everyone's fun with his squirting feature. Have a nice rest, heroes. <laughs> hey, look! Isn't that clapper? Yep, the contemptible crustacean, and one of my favorites from my childhood, got grabby with his claw grip action. My claw will take care of you. By the power. They should call you Wimp Lash. Whiplash, actually. The overgrown lizard cracked whip on the heroes with his tail. I'll give you a taste of my tail, He-Man. This spider must be on Skeletor's payroll. And Web Store caused He-Man's spider sense to tingle before getting caught in his web. You'll have to do better than that. That wasn't it for the figures that year, though. I didn't think there were any left. Are you sure? Yep, the original designs for He-Man and Skeletor were still being used on the Filmation show, and always would be, in fact. So for those who missed out on the originals in 82, there were the originals. The original He-Man and the original Skeletor. Even back then, reissues rocked. Exactly. Skeletor's Bad Bird Screech was reissued as well. 
Are you ready, my darling Screech? This time with Battle Armor Skeletor. Gotta pump those Battle Armored guys out. Screech! Prepare to attack! And Masters got their first and last mail offers in the 80s. A two-pack of Heroic Warriors was offered, 84's Mechanic, and the previous year's Ram Man. I won! Yes, Rammy, that was a coveted spot, being a mail-order toy in the 80s. And, no, not an Evil Warriors two-pack. The Evil Horde! <laughs> a year before they were released on pegs, Hordak and Grizzlore were offered as mail-away exclusives. And G.I. Joe's Battle Gear had been a big hit for Hasbro for fans to replace all those weapons lost on away missions. So Mattel released their first, and last, weapons pack featuring recolors of the weapons of He-Man, Beast-Man, Zodak, and more. He-Man will be right back after these messages. And now back to He-Man. The vehicles got even zanier in 84. What in Eternia's name is that? That just might be the goofiest vehicle of the 80s. We'll take the Dragon Walker. Heck, it might be the goofiest vehicle ever made. The battery-powered Dragon Walker proved that there may have been faster pursuit vehicles on Eternia. It's best we walk from now on. But it's nowhere near as fun. Hey, what's that? It's the Road Ripper, Eternia's fastest pursuit vehicle. Hey, I wonder how it works. Well, much like your figure, it used a ripcord to get its engine revving. <laughs> the Road Ripper was available both on its own or with a rider. Battle Armor He-Man, of course. Boy, they sure produced a lot of those Battle Armor figures in 84. Hey, am I alone in thinking a turtle-themed Masters of the Universe figure would have been hilarious to include with the Road Ripper? Good idea. Ah, huh, good idea. Sounds good to me. Great! It's unanimous! I don't like it! Talk about a pain in the neck. What a negatron. Perhaps it may come true someday. Now you're being an optimist prime. And Skeletor spun up a whirlwind of trouble. Trouble? <laughs> I'll show you trouble! With a zany new vehicle of his own. The Roton, a rotating... thing... of... Doom! Best part was that it didn't need batteries like the Dragon Walker to work its play feature. But how? Just by pushing it forward. Plus, it was a bit faster than the Dragon Walker. But not fast enough for Skeletor's liking. Hurry! Faster! Faster! <laughs> wow! It's a horse! And is he a vehicle? Is he a steed? I guess he might be a blend of both. His name is Stridor. He has terrific strength and a computer system that can detect trouble quickly. Two years before 3030 had some stomping to do, this robot horse trotted onto toy shelves. Him and me is gonna get along just fine. And once you got him open, he just... stood there. Nothing moved on him, except some guns... His tail. Yeah. But boy, could he stand there and look cool. <laughs> there must be something wrong with his fuel mixture. He came either by himself or with a rider. The perfect companion for He-Man. Actually, no. You know who was included with Stridor instead? You're about to find out. Good old Fisto. Nice to see someone other than He-Man be associated with a vehicle or steed of his own. While villains were light on vehicles in 84, they more than made up for it with the second Master's playset released. The Sinister Snake Mountain. Mm, this place gives me the creeps. Similar to Castle Grayskull two years prior, it doubled as a carrying case that could be closed up and carried by handle. But unlike Grayskull, looked better opened up, which doubled it in length. And while it didn't have the power of Grayskull, it did have the power of batteries. And we're talking the heavy stuff. 
9 volt. It had a battery powered microphone to give you a spooky voice. <laughs> a Gabby Demon. A striking snake. A gate that He-Man could easily bust through. We'll see about that. And a trap door. And his prison, too. Every Eternian playset needs a trap door, right? The trap door dropped captives into a net below to those foolish enough to approach the gate. So stay out of them, even if one of your friends dares you to go in. Plus some creepy sticker decals along the bottom like Grayskull. And horrific sculpting details on the inside walls. Having fresh new adventures were easy with such a colorful cast of characters, vehicles, and playsets. But if you wanted to get some ideas... And the Masters of the Universe! Filmation's beloved animated series returned for a second and final season in 1984, with another 65 staggering episodes. That's 130 episodes in just two seasons. The more, the merrier. The second season included what many fans regard as one of the best, if not the best episode, The Problem with Power. Even though the show didn't have a proper series finale, this episode seems to work best as the swan song for the Eternians, with He-Man learning a valuable lesson in responsibility, and in the end, carrying Tila off in his arms into the sunset. You know, television is not the only way to be entertained by an exciting story. Really? There is another way. It's called reading. That's right, He-Man. If you enjoyed reading, along with some fine toy artistry, a lot more He-Man hit print that year. If you wanted to see your heroes and villains do battle in comic form, the only option for North Americans were the mini-comics, included with the figures and vehicles. Bruce Timm, well known for his work on Batman the Animated Series, brought life to Hordak and the Evil Horde in his 1984 mini-comic, a year before he appeared in toy stores or on the She-Ra Animated Series. Although some other countries around the world would get their own comic runs, DC or Marvel didn't produce any standalone MOTU comics in 84. There were, however, tons of illustrated books published in 84, courtesy of Golden Publishing some featuring beautiful covers by legendary master's artist Earl Norham. A trip with an astronaut, an adventure with the great detective Sherlock Holmes, a comedy. What? That's not at all what these books were about. There were five super adventure books, two giant picture books, and nine coloring and activity books. Phew, what a full year. That's it for Masters of the Universe in 1984. I hope you enjoyed today's adventure. I certainly enjoyed making it. Hope you all enjoyed the trip back to 1984. In reality, no one can go back into the past. That's only make-believe. Oh, I think there are quite a few people out there who believe time travel is possible. You just have to care enough. You're not quitting so soon, are you? Sorry, He-Man, but it's not possible to mention every single thing, and if I tried, I wouldn't be able to get to the History of Masters of the Universe 1985 edition for another couple decades. You'll leave when I tell you to! I'm glad you're enjoying the video, Skeletor, but it's time to wrap this one up. What? Why? Ugh, lingerers. Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's time to go. Thanks, Duncan. And thanks to the Patreon tribe for your Patreon power! Yeah, you're welcome. Hey, you're not a part of the Patreon tribe. Anytime I can give you a hand, just let me know. Okay, you can head over to patreon.com slash michaelmercy to give a bionic hand if you're able. And as a thanks, you'll be able to see tons of Patreon-exclusive videos, sneak peeks at videos and pictures, vote on Patreon polls, and take part in our community events. When things look bad, teamwork's the answer. You're sure to get a warm welcome from the Patreon tribe. <laughs> I'll give them a sticky welcome. What? No, don't, don't do that. Anyways, thanks to the Patreon tribe members for your helping hands. Yours may not be as big as mine, but it'll still be appreciated. If you're already a member of the Patreon tribe, then you're using the power. And that's very special magic indeed. Indeed. Also, thank you to the YouTube channel members who hit that join button next to subscribe. Now you're playing with membership power. 
leave a master's recall on the comment wall, and to join the tribe, sting subscribe. And remember to tap that bell to be able to tell whenever a new video or surprise livestream drops. Until the History of Masters of the Universe 1985 edition, so long. <laughs> See you next time. By the power of Nerd Mustang! I'm going to do something helpful right now. What's that? I'm going to say goodbye!